I'm ready to kill son. I'm ready to feed and cap and licks. I'm ready to kill something. Hey, hey. Sad, supposed to be, supposed to be, supposed to be. Them niggas ain't. Them niggas is. Them niggas ain't close to me. Niggas ain't niggas don't laugh. Them niggas don't hop. Them niggas don't close to me. In my real life, and I am so excited to share this with you tonight. We're exploring the world of psychics and mediums and how their insight can help improve our personal lives. And this stuff is real, I'm gonna tell you, it really is. My guests are celebrity tarot card readers and mediums who will talk about how they read their clients' energy to connect with spirits who have crossed over to the other side to help people get the insight they need to move forward with their lives. I know people, my people are people. We scared of this stuff, but it's real. I'm telling y'all. Uh, and later on the show, we'll be joined by two people who are ready to receive live psychic readings. So please stick around for that. Please welcome Medium Quatita, better known as Queen, and celebrity tarot card reader and psychic Boots Tarot. Hello, ladies. Hi. 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 How are you? Oh my God, thank you for being here. And um, I love this again, like I said in the intro, it's something that I know a lot of our people are, girl, what you mess with them spirits for? Or that's, it, you know, you playing with the devil. And, I, I, and I've, I'm like, well, all spirits aren't negative. There's also actually good spirits. And we're gonna get all into that later on the show. So Perfect. tell everyone what you do and the abilities that you have. Queen, let's start with you. Well, um, I call myself the ancestral interpreter. I am known as the ancestral interpreter. I simply just interpret the information given to me by the ancestors. I connect with our ancestors on the other side that works with us and help us every day. Wow. Wow. And Boots? Boots. Okay. So my name is Boots Tarot. I'm a celebrity tarot card reader. Uh, basically, I use my tarot deck that I've created for myself to better clarify the intuitive messages that I naturally receive. And I've been able to obtain quite a vast audience because of it via Instagram. And um, I'm just here to help girl in any way that I can. And I always keep it real. So don't come to see me if you want that water down. There. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. Now, I know you work with many celebrities, including Nene Leakes and Tamar Braxton. Yes, so how do you help them? Like, the, the, does it provide a relief for them when you have your readings with them? Well, it's just like any other person, except for what I find with celebrities is they come with a lot more energy than the average individual. And I think it's because they have so much attention on them that they carry a bigger amount of energy to separate, dissect, to divinate from. Uh, but we're all just people trying to figure it out. So I treat them like I would treat anybody else. Um, and uh, they definitely leave me feeling relieved and refreshed like they got a yoni steam. I, I was wondering okay. about that because I, I feel like people that are, you know, um, in the light, you do have a lot of people uh, wishing good and bad on you. And I'm sure that yeah. that carries over in the other world as well. Right. Like that. Does. energy. Doesn't and stop. One, of the, one of the biggest things is like public attention. You know, when you are moving in your real world, what differs from celebrities and average people is that they don't have thousands of people judging what they're doing. So that's like another layer that you have to read through to get to the heart of what they're going through. I do so effortlessly, um, which is why I'm able to retain such celebrity clientele, but it is a difference. And that difference, is after I read a nini, honey, I gotta take a nap. <laughs> after I read somebody else, <laughs> yeah, I think period. Daddy, I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> right. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah. Queen, you connect people with their spirits of their loved ones. We have a clip yeah. of uh, one of your readings on Instagram Live. Let's take a look. He tells me that he's not mad, that he's okay. Um, I don't know respiratory failure if, like, like if his lungs or if something yeah, failed. He had I, bad asthma. He had no bad way. asthma. Yep. So what do you feel or see when a spirit connects with you? Do you see through the eyes of that spirit what they're trying to tell you or do they just say it? How does that work? Well, for me, I work with all of the clairs. There's a such thing called as the clairs. You know, there's clear sentience, cognizance. Um, I'm very audience and um, voyant, clairvoyant, but I work with all of the clairs. And so I get a lot of snapshots. I hear very well, um, at like thoughts, okay? <laughs> it's like a thought process. And it's, it's, I hear them until I connect inside very well. And then I can hear their accent. I can hear what they sound like. Um, I, I connect with the soul's energy. Um, 
that's pretty much what I do. I do sometimes use tarot. Um, my daughter is a tarot card reader and I, I love it. I love boots. Let me say that. Um, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I love boots. And so um, I, I simply connect with them and I listen to them. I hear very well. Um, and like I said, I have feelings. I just kind of know sometimes, just know it. Um, and I put it all together to formulate a message to bring to the people. And for me, the way the way I differ from her is she deals directly with the ones that have crossed over and she uses tarot to divinate her messages. With me, I'm straight up, she was talking about the Claire's. I'm Claire sentient. So like the way that she was able to relay the message for the respiratory, I would start getting a shortness of breath or feeling as if I was getting a shortness of breath, pull a card to clarify and say something similar as to what she said. She's hearing audio. I'm catching feelings, but they're still delivering the same message in a different Absolutely. kind of feeling, if that makes sense. So was it scary for you ladies early on, especially when you're younger and you start <laughs> feeling these things and hearing these things? Did you feel like, am I crazy or am I sick? Or did you instantly know you had a gift? I, I've been like this all my life. I was like this as a little girl and it just progressively gotten worse. I played with, with um, children. Uh, I called them my imaginary friends. My mother always oh my allowed God. me to do so. And so I, I never felt weird because my mother never allowed me to feel that way. She just embraced it. And so as time went on, um, my gift com continued to open up. And now it's, it's, I'm, I'm busted. I'm open. The girl, girl does. We, it's so funny because we share that in common. I had an imaginary friend who later I found out in the orphanage had passed away 10 years prior. Um, mm. So I, I was born in orphan. So I was always considered the weird, you know, kind of child that was <laughs> yeah. hard to adopt and things of that nature. Nature, but luckily I was adopted by a spiritual mother who said, no, he's not crazy or weird. He is gifted. Uh, she began teaching me some of her practices. And again, just like Queen, it became normalized for us. Um, so the avant-garde nature or the judgments that we get from other religions or people who don't understand, that's kind of weird to us. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. What we've been given, you know? I wonder how many children were misdiagnosed, given medicine, abused because they had these gifts and they're telling mom, I'm, I see something or I have a friend and people don't take it seriously. That's a sad thing to think about. Yeah. It, is. it could be sad, but it's more of a misunderstanding. I mean, if you're a mother who's not psychic and you have a psychic child, the first thing you're going to do is go to a professional who's going to give them medicine to suppress whatever their brain it's is going doing. To suppress it. Absolutely. Going crazy. Um, I think entering into the 21st century, though, I mean, it's becoming a lot more. You see kids saying, Mom, I think I was somebody else. Um, and then they have references to that somebody. It's deeper than that now. And I think people's minds are opening up. What would you say, Queen? I, I agree with you because I have a lot of parents that call me and say, hey, my child is seeing this. Hey, she's sleeping with a pillow in the middle of her doorway. Um, I, I have to see sometimes if there's portals inside of the house because there are such things as portals where mm -hmm. the spirits come in and out of. And, and honestly, not all spirits are clean. So we have to be aware of that. And a lot of people mm -hmm. get that mis misconstrued that because I interact with the ancestors that all spirits are clean and they're not. They're not. What, is, what does that mean? They're not clean. Um, well, I don't like to use the words um, demons and angels, but that's what we kind of talk about. We're talking about energy. I believe in energy, not so much as a physical thing, but energy. And there's a lot of energy that can be unclean that moves in a way that causes negative behavior. Got it. Agree. So for me, um, and I'll break it down into a way that I understand it. You know, you have yin and yang. You have positive energy and ascending energy. Those will be considered like your angels. Or you have descending energy, and that is considered like your demon spirits or anything of that sort. Um, when you are consorting with energy on the other side, you as the psychic or clairvoyant need to decipher, oh, I can't touch that because you're about to make something happen up in my house. Or I can say you have a loved one that might still be here because they need to finish a task of some sort. So um, there is a level of cleanliness, but you know, they, like they always say, cleanliness is next to godliness. And I smell like those period. And come through with that spirit. That's, that's the message right there. Well, okay. Speaking of, speaking of messages, we have some messages from our YouTube chat room I'd like to share with you ladies. Kia says, oh my God, I watch Boots and Queen every time they go live. <laughs> Jason said, I'm here for Queen. She's a healer. Jessica said, wow, this is an exciting show. And Brent said, I'm scared to get a reading. I'm glad we're talking about this, which brings me to my next question. Have you ever been afraid of the information you receive from the spirit world? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
I, I was afraid to, to give my clients some information. I was, uh, I, I did readings or I was employed by Mo3, the rapper. And um, people know me as a spiritual advisor, whether it is or not. I did readings for him. And so um, the information that I got was that um, someone was trying to kill him. And I didn't know how to deliver that information safely. And before I could, um, I reached out to him via his DM instead of text message. And before I could, he was murdered on the expressway. For me, oh it was God. the same thing dealing with um, not a celebrity, but it was a big case, Alexis Crawford. Um, you know, this was a young individual who was a, uh, uh, let's just say brace yourself, which was the same thing that I interpreted when I actually read it. And this was one of the biggest things that I've done on a nationwide level. I said it on the shade room as a comment, they will find her body on Saturday. And again, that's difficult for us to deliver, especially with people watching us deliver these messages. So yeah. dealing with death or transitioning or addiction or anger or rage on the other side, it always is difficult to deliver the message. So uh, we have to stay protected. And I think Queen of how to protect herself like me so we could absolutely does it come with a lot of guilt, especially when you, you, you know, you, you, you didn't get to get the, get the message queen. Did, did you feel guilty about that? Because, you know, you saw it. it. I would imagine that's so much pressure for both of you to get these messages and not know how to say it. And if you don't get to them in time, what kind yeah, of pressure? It is a lot of pressure because it could go either way and you don't really know, but you know, there's a message to deliver. Mm -hmm. And I've had to deliver some very harsh and hard messages to people. And, you know, sometimes uh, people may come out of egg. You don't know what they're going to do, but mm -hmm. um, you, it still has to be done. The work still has to be done and I'm in it for the work. I would agree with her. I think that, you know, especially when you hold back, this was early on when you start out as a psychic or using your gifts, you do feel a level of guilt for maybe not saying exactly what it is that you are perceiving and kind of dress it up. And then your client comes back and says, well, dang, boom, 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 having these dang, I wish yeah. I would have said that to that mm -hmm. person. Yeah. Um, but with experience and, you know, gaining the trust of your clientele, I, I say it how it is now. My girls come to me for the real, honey, so... I, I said um, I have to start you, you doing grow into that. It. Yeah, because you have it, to. Yeah. If y'all get any spiritual messages during the show from my grandma or any of my peoples, can y'all can y'all let me know? Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Um, okay. Um, I would love to be able to give you something because I was picking up stuff earlier today, and I told him I would wait on it. And so, um, the first thing I did want to acknowledge, though, for you really quickly, and I ain't going to go into nothing long, but I do keep wanting to acknowledge, like, a gentleman. Like, I don't know. You said grandmother, but I keep picking up, like, grandfather. But I also want to acknowledge someone that may have been into, like, racing or race cars or something with sports. So I want to say that, too. Also, um, mm. Take your time, I'm boy. sorry, because it's for boots. <laughs> no, that's um, fine. Is it my uh, drunk uncle? Because he never leave me alone, child, especially with <laughs> <in> public appearances. <laughs> but he keeps telling me that there's um there's a show that's going to be very successful for you. Thank you very much. And very I successful. guess I will, the interesting thing, Queen, is I'm going to echo that to Claudia. That's the message I got for her before we started. Um, this work that you're putting in is going to lead to something further. You got disappointed two weeks ago um, with some information, but... Where the one door closes, you go through the window or you open up another door. And in the next Absolutely. two or before the end of April, there will definitely be something to be celebrated with you, Claudia Jordan. Make sure you take your team with you too, especially Tim, because he was on it. And Queen, um, thank you for that message. My drunk Uncle James loves blonde black girls. So he's probably <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know you're on you're um, on point. You're on point. There I was just, there was some um, stuff a couple weeks ago. So thank you. I, I would love to just come back in and say something because I, I got sidetracked. For, for boots there, but um, if I could just come back to you really quick, Queen, I want you to understand, I don't want to go too personal again. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be something in your life that is personal that's going to be closing out. And they want you to know that walking away from it is going to be the best decision that you've made. And you may not see it, but it's going to be... Um, so I don't know if it's going to be in a public or people want it to be public, but you handle it the way you need to handle it, but allow it to close out and you save grace and save face behind that. You understand? 
you are more on point than like like you really on point right now. And I you see what's happening right now? Well, the thing is with Claudia, you've done the work, and I hope you don't mind if I pull a card. Ambrosia no. is upright. So um this card basically represents the reaping from the crown. All of your thoughts that you put into the planning and the executions of what you've been doing are gonna come into fruition and they're coming into fruition very quickly. You're gonna start to see one door open, another door open, then you're gonna have to pick and choose which way you wanna go. Queen, and for you, I mean public appearances all day and i think you already know this in the month of may sis um so i can't wait to see you where we gonna be at <laughs> okay kiss period yeah i love that i received it i received um, gratitude too. We're going to take a quick break. I got to wipe my eyes because y'all done hit a nerve with me real quick. Y'all, 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 y'all hit me with that, with some, with some facts and on point two weeks ago, like everything you're saying, we're going to take. If you're seeing this video right here, it means that you're exclusively invited.